Good morning everyone. Welcome to our next installment of Stay at Home Safaris. This morning we quickly shot out to see if we could find Tamba again. Uh, he is still at the same place by the Kudu Kill. Hasn't really moved much. Um, hasn't taken the, the kill into any any better position. Um, but a beautiful morning. So it's bound to be a good day. So we were a little bit concerned yesterday. Uh, he hasn't got his kill in, in the best place. So overnight we were sort of hoping uh, that he would have moved it into, into a bit of V or, or fork of the tree. But it seems to still be in the same place. So I think we're going to sit here for a little bit and see what he does. He seems to be yawning quite a bit, which in a bit of guide superstition um, three yawns means that they're probably going to get up and moving. And now that he's grooming, quite a good sign. Uh, at least he's still active for now. It's cool. So it probably is the best time now to go up and, and feed. I was correct in saying that he was going to get up, and he did. Unfortunately, he moved in the wrong direction, away from the tree and in front of my vehicle. So we're going to have to try maneuver around him, leave him for, for now, and see if there's anything else out there. Beautiful scene on this morning. All the impalas in the open clearing from, from the night. As the mist is, is, is rising. So it's quite interesting. The older male on the right, obviously putting a bit of pressure on those younger males, which obviously move away from the herd as the rutting season starts. He's obviously going to chase them away from his females. So they know competition to him in terms of breeding with or mating with those females. But obviously he doesn't want any other males within, within that herd. Also a hyena that we can see in the, in the clearings. The impala aren't too phased about him. He's not impacting their behavior at all. Just purely out on a, on a scavenging mission. So quite an interesting scene uh, as we drove around the corner, we saw that first hyena just moving up and down and then came around to six of them all in the road. There's no den site um, that we know of nearby. So quite interesting that they've all congregated uh, together here. Normally if, they, if they're on sort of a scavenging uh, mission, they tend to go out by themselves. So to see them all here together is quite interesting. So it's a possibility that these hyenas heard the impala's alarm calling. Maybe they, they, they saw a leopard or, or something like that. 
and they've moved all moved into the area to, to investigate, realizing now that there's nothing much. The impalas have all settled down and they're gonna slowly start moving out of the out of the area as as it starts to heat up and look for some shade. So we saw saw the pigeons in, in groups, uh, so flocks of, they're usually in flocks of three to four. And interestingly enough that they actually don't drink, uh, so they, they purely eat fruit. So obviously getting what they, what they need by, by eating the fruit. Great viewing of an African hoopoe. We often don't, don't see them sitting still like this. And for those of you who, who know what the feeling is like to get a photo of, of this bird and a good photo is quite a hard thing to do. So to see him sitting like this, pretty amazing. So as the day gets hotter, the, you've seen this giraffe come towards the water, possibly looking for something to drink. But giraffe are very vulnerable uh, when they when they are drinking, especially due to their size, that they have to spread their legs and, and really bend down, and, and be in quite a compromising position when they when they are drinking. So you saw him very hesitant uh, to drink from from a little sort of puddle like that. So that's something pretty special to see. Obviously the, these females feeling a lot more safe than that male did, especially because there is now a whole group of them. Now you can see how, how precarious that situation and dangerous that, that stance is for them, especially if there are predators in the area. Um, more vulnerable they are when they are drinking. So we are looking at the Birchall starling. It is one of many starlings within South Africa. Uh, the starling family is a great example of iridescence in birds. Um, so Iridescence is basically created by the manner in which keratin is layered um, and then as light falls on the feathers these keratin layers reflect different wavelengths of light differently uh, thus resulting in, in iridescence. So this is the Bennett's woodpecker. Um, we only get four species of woodpeckers within the Sabi Sound Game Reserve. And interestingly enough, uh, the Bennett's are the only ones really that will forage on the ground. So about 85% of their, their food um, is collected off, off the ground. Usually um, their, their diet consists mostly of ants um, and then termites and other insects. So it, it forages on average about 30 to 50% of the day.
So quite unusual behavior with these water bucks at the moment. The male is obviously showing a lot of interest in that female. And she's, she's actually tolerating him to an extent, although she has a very young calf. So it's unlikely that she would be in estrus or ready to mate with him. But he's obviously got something else on his mind. So we're sticking to the theme of today, which seems to be birds. Uh, we just found a secretary bird out in the clearings. Pretty amazing to, to see them. Uh, they are quite rare birds, especially in this area. They are classified as near threatened uh, within South Africa. So really nice to see them often seen in these, in these grasslands, open area. Uh, and moving through the through the grasslands just trying to catch any prey usually uh, about 90% of the time their, their prey is caught on the ground and mostly with their with their claws and then stamped on uh, with their feet so we've just popped into where Tamba was with the kill Unfortunately, looks like he has lost the kill. We couldn't find him, so he might have moved off either to find some water or some shade. So, nonetheless, a really amazing birding drive for uh, all of the, those bird fanatics out there. I think we're going to head home and then see what we can find this afternoon. So stay safe, everyone. Stay home and stay positive. Welcome to our afternoon drive. Um, we were lucky enough going to go follow up um, on, on where Tamba was seen this morning. Uh, I know that we said we didn't, we didn't find him later on uh, in, in the morning. But luckily enough, driving along spotted, he moved his kill uh, just a little bit further in towards the block. We luckily found him as well. And he's moved into a much better tree this time. So hopefully we'll get some nice shots of him later up the tree eating. So I think it's been quite a hot day today. Um, he's found a nice patch of shade. He is quite full still, so I think we're going to leave, carry on see, and see what we can find and then come back a little bit later and see if he's gone up the tree for us. So sticking with our theme of birds of today, um, we're going to be answering yesterday's question from Neil, which is a black-headed oriole, for those of you who got it right, well done. And then for our question for today is who builds these nests? Uh, they build them throughout the summer months. And you could just name the family. There's obviously a lot of species within that family that build the nests, but you can just name the family. Good luck. So this little one getting a bit confident coming close to the vehicle then realizing that it's definitely safer by mom's side. So it's a lovely breeding herd of elephants so you can see varying in, in ages and usually sort of run by the females of, of the herd big male coming through the bushes here. So lovely to see it's actually Karula coming out after this female. 
had a lovely encounter with him with Derek the other day. And you can just see now compared to that female how big he is. Okay, everyone, I think this is where we're going to leave Karula there. That was a pretty amazing experience. What a great, what a great little bit to the afternoon. All right, everyone, we've just come back to, to Tamba, where he stashed his kill. He seems to be still in the same position, hasn't really moved much. So we've just gotten posi ourselves into position, uh, just in case he does climb up the tree. And we'll sit and wait. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Alrighty everyone, unfortunately our patience didn't pay off. Uh, Tamba is still asleep. So I think we're going to leave him here and we will see what tomorrow holds. Uh, so good night everyone, stay safe, stay at home and stay positive.